da 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 Good evening. Blimey, four people already. Sorry, guys. I'm just setting up my YouTube so I can see on here. Bear with me two seconds. Uh, da da. And we are there. Right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Good evening. Hello, Stuart. Good evening, my friend. Hope you're well. Right, tonight we are going to do a question that Ian Payne on YouTube has asked to do a couple of bits and pieces, which not really all clad based. Hi, Andrew. Nice to see you, mate. Um, we're on the ball. If it overruns a little bit more than an hour, that's not an issue. We'll just carry on. We are going to be doing how to put the yellow stripe on a bomb and how to do the tips of a prop. So that's the plan tonight. We've got Oak 309, Black Primer, White Primer, our uh, trainer yellow, ready for everything. So we're away. I actually prepared, look, I've got a drop tank. It's not a bomb, but it's a drop tank. It'll do the job. We've got what we need. I haven't turned the compressor on yet. I haven't been home from work long. So we'll go for it. But yeah, it's this is going to be, I mean, ask me questions and whatever. And we're also, we're going to use, and I bet I ain't got it out because I'm a fool. That's Matt. Let me get down the dreaded 310 clear coat gloss mm, people seem to still seem to be having trouble with the clear coat gloss um not drying what have you but it's one of those things that i'll show you tonight that it does dry if you use it properly and how it's supposed to be used right so because we haven't got i'm a bit short not short of time but a little bit what have you the first thing i'm going to do is put primer onto the prop i haven't got any gloves rubber gloves i refuse to buy them at the moment due to the nhs needing them and i'm still standing by what i said so, end of the day, I've got soap and water. I can wash my hands afterwards when I need to. Okay, right. So, just a dripper black primer to begin with. Now, Ian wanted to know how I do my tips or how he can do his tips. I'm not saying this is the right way, but this is the way I do it. We've got the compressor. I know we're still set at about 12 PSI due to the fact I was spraying last night on the um, GWH F15. I had a few minutes last night, so I started on the cockpit. I had my jab the weekend, so I didn't do anything. I thought I'd take it easy. As everybody been saying they're having all these dreadful side effects i didn't get a single one and nor did my wife which is amazing hi steven hope you're well mate so all i've done i'm just going to lay this down for a few minutes let that settle and then So there we go. We've got one black prop, which is no problem at all. Okay, right. The next thing, which I forgot to get something out. I can't lose that a bit tonight. So I've laid that there and I've got my nice bit of plasticky stuff to put that on. Let's give the airbrush a quick clean out. 
do, 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 do. Just gotta find something first. There it is. Okay. Right. As you can see, I'm prepared as always. Hello, young Frederick. How you doing, fella? I have been watching your Lancaster. I just tend not to I sit and watch and not comment because I think the way I type, I take over your screen, your thingy a bit, but I do, I am there, believe it or not. Um, I worked out why I couldn't give you a spanner. Uh, it's because I'm not a business base, but I'm going to change that to a brand base or a business base, what have you. Then I'll make you a spanner. Although someone told me you're a spanner anyway, fella. <laughs> so I'll just give that a quick flush. Nothing major. I even cleaned up my pot tonight. There you go. That's it. I'm ready to go. Right. Now, doing drop tank or bombs, rather. A lot of World War II bombs, <laughs> they have a little yellow ring around them. And people find it very difficult to mask up and paint these little yellow rings. Now, I believe I show you how to do it, Fred, quite a while ago, or um, it's either you or someone else asked me, and that's how I do it. But all you do is get a cocktail stick, put it in the hole, which is already there normally, for your contact to onto your bomb rack, like so. So all we're going to do with that first is, um, excuse me, what was I going to do first? I lost the plot a bit. Get the old grey primer out. Do we need primer? No. Blow up. We don't need primer at night. What we'll do, we'll put, that's what we'll do. We'll put down the white primer. There you go. I'm just trying to think the quickest way possible and the easiest way, to be honest. But this is how I do it. It doesn't have to be done this way, but it's how I do it, and I've always found it easier, and it works. Remember, we get 15 people in here, and I'll do a giveaway. If we don't, it'll roll over again till next week. Close your eyes, Fred. And I've made a mess. Ha! Serves me right. I blame Robbie who overfilled it. Anyway, right, so yeah, I know. I got thousands of them under here. Just you know what it's like doing a live. You don't think about it or you don't have time. That's the way it goes. Anyway, I'm just gonna prime this up in white first. It seems odd, but believe me, there's a reason. Normally I'd do it in grey and then just do a tip white, but today I'm going to do the whole thing because it saves on a process. Lay it down, just like you would normal. I know, Fred, sorry. It's been a long day, mate. I was up at the crack of 7 o'clock, or 8 o'clock rather. Terrible start at nine o'clock in the morning. Don't know where I am. Anyway, <laughs> that's your wipe down. Stir that there for dry. This stuff, um, another little tip. It comes in packaging, protecting stuff. It's layered polystyrene, plastic, whatever it is. It makes a brilliant holder. I think we're up to 10. So I always use this stuff, and it's quite wide, it's flat, and you can put bigger parts on it, and it won't fall over. So there we go. Did need a great deal of that. Right. Put that at the back, out of the way for a moment. Blow that through and out, like that. Again, give this a quick swizz round. Dum. 
yeah i had my jab saturday as i said i had no after effects the wife didn't have after effects. yeah i had a dodgy not a dodgy arm but i had a sore arm the next day but that's the same as having a flu jab so i recommend everyone to get it and i had the az one and so did lynn she's grown a, a mask a, a mask a beard and moustache but hey ho i told her she needed a shave but which turn into a werewolf. So we'll just blow that out. Give it one more quick blow back and tip. Yeah, nothing wrong with it, Fred. That's the European is trying to scare us so that we don't use it and they think they can have more. Apologies, there's any Europeans in here. I don't mean it like that. I'm not that cruel, but sometimes your governments are crap. Right, so here we go. Right, so the next step is the trainer yellow. Actually, I'm a bit of a fool because if I'd have thought ahead, but there you go, we'll do that in a minute. We're on the yellow. You know, I'll tell you what I'll do. So, no, while that's drying for a few seconds. Right, the tips of the props people seem to be having problems with never have had but all i do i've got a thin bit of kabuki tape and i'm just gonna measure it off roughly using the flatter edge as a bend so you then bend the tape round to meet the other side exactly piece of cake like that Oh, brilliant. I'll have to watch that at some point. Now, I'm going to do all four, although it'll take me a little bit longer. But this is something that I was asked by a gentleman on YouTube to show. And it doesn't take long, if I'm honest. I'm keeping brilliant, young Richard. I hope you're well. I hope your watermarks have all gone on properly now. All oh, right, yeah, fair enough. I am a vet. Does that mean anything? What? That? Yeah, oh, okay. Right. And we're just going to do that. Liven that up. Sorry about the interruption. And that's that bit. So that one can go away. Then we get the thicker or the wider kabuki tape. Yeah, probably, mate. And all we've got to do is just slightly underlap it and then fold that round. The same with this one. Underlap it. Just to protect the lower part from the air from anything that blows around. Doodly do do do. And we'll just whip that through. This isn't actually Russian. This is my normal speed. So it looks like I'm Russian, but I'm not. Just chuck a little bit, tiny amount of white in there now. Should have got the pipette out. I know that. You keep telling me off. So, right, now that we've got our um, kabuki tape on and everything's good, we're just going to lightly do the tips. So they're good. I know you can't see this, but I will sort out another camera over the top of my head. 
Well, I've got a fireplace in front of me, which is where all the mess goes to from the the overspray residue. And we're just gonna whiten those tips up, ready for the yellow. And it's as simple as that. So now we have four white tips, all looking good. And we're going to now clean that brush up yet again. Da 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 da. Blow that out. Bin that because that's not very nice. Bit of Lynn's toilet paper. Uh, where's my airbrush cleaner gone? That's good, isn't it? There it is. Doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo. Right. Clean it up. Blow that out. Quick blow back. I've been doing the, uh, I didn't do a lot of the weekends, to be honest. I did start on the GWHF 15. So the cockpit tub is nearly ready. It's got its um, photo etch on, which I think looks great. So we'll go from there. Right. Now we're on to a train of yellow. Now, two jobs for this. I'm better appeasing, isn't I? See hundreds of the blood and things. There you go. Is that happy enough, Fred? <laughs> and all we're going to do, you don't want much, just a few drops. And then bin that. We ain't going to need no more of that. Right. So, we're going to do the bomb or the drop tank as this is. See, I have got some, Fred. Practicing what I preach now. That's not good for me. And all we're going to do is just yellow off the nose. What we'll do, we'll do two ends to make it look right. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. I'm talking to Richard. I hope he's still here. Can I wash what out? Um, for the, how much they cost, to be honest, Andrew, I think I paid two quid for 250. It's not worth worrying about. You can, um, but then you're going to be wasting airbrush cleaner or whatever you want to use, cellulose thinners or whatever, and you're going to lose that. It, it, it works out. It's just cheap to bin them. To be honest, they're recycled plastic in the first place. Uh, so they're not hurting Freddy Polar Bear. Oh, yes, mate. 100%. Right. I was just going to mention your little issue over the weekend with people stealing your photographs and calling in their own. I've been in that position. It is hideous and horrible. Uh, a bloke who stole mine got a magazine article of it. Then he immediately got the sack when he couldn't replicate what I did. And I'm not saying I'm any good because I'm not even as I'm nowhere near the standard of Richard. So I don't understand really. But there we go. That's all we've done. We've done the two ends. It was in the washing machine. Oh, I bet your missus love you, Steve. But yeah. So. There's the two ends, all nice and yellowy. And all we're going to do now with the prop is do, just put, I'm trying to do it so you can see what I'm doing. Just angling it so you do the edges. Try not to spray towards the prop. 
you will get overspray, even with an inch and a half kabaki on there. You don't want much. You only want to collar it. You don't want to give it a hiding. If you give it too much, you'll get a line, even with airbrush paint. And it's quite simple. This works for all scales. Yeah, that is exactly the right colour. That's what I based it on when they brought out the new Sea King. That's why I made the yellow back in the day. Right. So there you go. That's that. We'll let that dry and then I'll unmask it and you'll see the results. As it is, I'll tip that out. You don't need yellow again. I thought it was going to take longer for some reason. Hello, Brian. You're very welcome, sir. I'm glad you got it. If we can hit uh, between 15 and 20 again tonight, and I'll do another one. Have you used it yet, Brian? I know you probably only just got it, but it would be nice to get feedback on how you guys are getting on the paint. I know poor Richard can't use it. Uh, totally understandable. If he could use it, I'd send him up. For reasons I know. Oh, brilliant. Great news. So we're up to 14 in the live at the moment, which isn't shabby. And I'm quite pleased about the reactions we're getting. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this as regular as possible. Now, I think it's working quite well. Oh, nice one, Stephen. Good to hear. It's nice to get feedback like that. You know, it does mean a lot to hear what's going on and find out how people are liking it. That's all right for Fred and Glenn and Cameron and Mick. You know, so us great, yeah. But we're, we're all involved with the company. So when you hear it from someone who isn't, it means a lot more, if you know what I mean. So it's good news. Right. So we're on to our drop tank and how to get our line. Yeah. The pigment for the mil specs is a lot bigger than the metallics. If you've ever used X16 flat amount, but XF16 flat amount, I'll start again. FX, oh, God. Right, count to 10 and then start again. Right, if you've ever used flat aluminium XF16 from um, Tamiya, you will see the size of the flakes in um, the metallics. <laughs> now, you, it's, it's what makes the colour up, the pigments. They are the pigments, the metallic flakes you see. We don't use flakes. We use powders. So they are very, very fine. Hence, they don't need the ball bearings. Now, because of the makeup of mil specs, the mil spec pigments are quite a lot bigger. Although still very tiny, they're quite a lot bigger. And when they mix up, when they stand, sorry, when they stand for a while, they will settle at the bottom. And it needs a ball bearing to mix that up. So you, you get the shake, you get the rattle, which is lovely. Uh, I know exactly what you mean. This is dull aluminium, nothing in there. This is the olive drab I'm now going to use. If you can hear that on the mic. Now we hit 15, so we're going to do a giveaway. There you go. You can hear that. That's the reason, Brian. The pigments or the, the powders in all the metals are so fine they don't need to mix up. 
Yeah, at least half a dozen. Um, whereas the mill specs to aid shaking, he puts uh, Rob puts our uh, ball bearings in there. Right, so that's the olive drab. Now the secret to getting a yellow circle or line are these. Now these can I win this week? Mm. You better speak nicely to the wife. She's the one who picks them. I don't even pick them. I give her a list of names and she just chooses one at random. She don't know who you guys are. The only person at the moment who won't get one is Fred. Because he's not eligible. There you go. So, right. These were a pound from Poundland. And all they are is just 180 piece O-ring assortment got tons of the things in here some have been used some haven't <laughs> so we pick the one we want what we're gonna do is roll it on getting it nice and square to the place we want like so that's it all right yeah well ah yeah yeah, that was you. I thought it was Fred, but I couldn't remember so long ago. And then we put a, a thicker one on the back there to show a difference, to soften for a different one. So it's literally a quid's worth for 180 O-rings, which you can just bin afterwards, or if you're tight like me. I know I just threw a pipette away. There's some in here that I've used in the past. Look, that's got olive drab on it from bombs. But that's all it is. That's all I do. Now, all we've got to do now is get a little bit of olive drab. There we go, bottle stuck. Slow that out. <coughs> right. I should have put, I know, I should have used pipette. I thought about it as I started to pour it. Sorry, Fred. Now, all we're going to do now, what you want to do with this, the best way to do it is to spray it, and it's going to be difficult on camera, but you want to be, how can I put it, directly on to the, uh, let's see, let's see, on, how can I put it, uh, I'm trying to think what the angle, a naught degree angle, so it's dead on. So all you're doing is spraying around it. You, I mean, I'll fill the whole thing up, blow it. And all we're going to do is that. So we're just holding it so that we're not spraying on the O-ring, or we are spraying on the O-ring, directly onto the O-ring, not onto our yellow you don't come in like that, otherwise you're going to force, because it's round, you're going to force it under. So all you're doing is keeping it nice and level. You want to keep it level with the O-ring. Move your hand, not your airbrush. The airbrush needs a good clean. That's pressure. Huh. Six PSI, that ain't gonna work. Right. That's better. I should have cleaned my airbrush out. I just didn't have the time tonight. So all we're doing, we're keeping it level. Yeah, I'm even blasting it on. Because it ain't gonna hurt it. Sorry if I go back to Norfolk. In is isn't in Norfolk. Hello, it's gonna go off. Blimey, is that half an hour already? I thought I was going quite quick. So that's all we're doing. Painting it on. Making sure. Simple, easy way of putting your rings around bombs. You can place it anywhere. 
right this is a drop tank it's not a bomb but the same theory applies and it applies to if you want to ring around a nose you want to ring around a fuselage if you've got a big enough o-ring before you put the rear stabilizer on vertical stabilizer that is as simple as that now let that dry for five minutes while i clean the airbrush out Blah, blah, blah. I can't remember where you, I found that trick cheat from Andrew. I think I watched one of the guys on YouTube many, many moons ago. I know I've had those, I bet I had those um, O rings for at least eight, nine years. If not long, I mean, I've only been 2012 I started, so possibly eight years. Oh, so I started, I came back to the hobby. Then I got, I nearly left. And a certain Mr. Roberts made sure I didn't, which I can only thank him for. One more blowback. I'll finish off. Right, so that's it. Okay, that's the hard work done. Right, your props. Time to unmask. So when you unmask the props, pull the tape away. Being gentle, which isn't my middle name, and just unwrap them. If you pull away from the paint, if there is any residue left or it isn't quite dry, which I know this already is, but if you are doing it, even this works by brush painting as, as brush painting as well. So it will be thicker and it will be dry, uh, wetter. And then if you are unlucky like me and crack it off. And you just pull that back. Normally what I would do in the middle of this before I started peeling that off. Sorry, before I even paint the white, I would aqua gloss the whole of the prop to protect the black, as the prop always was shiny. Wooden props were always glossy. And there you go. And there is your prop. Uh, I can you see that all right. Can you see that all right? Yeah. You can see I've got a little bit of masking tape on that one, but that's fine. That's how you do your tips. Simple as that. How long did that take? Now. Look up to the Lord and say, please help, just in case. But yeah. Now we've got our drop tank. Now we've done our bit. It's dry. Just roll them off. And there are your lines, two different sizes, one thicker than the other because they're different sized O-rings. You get a perfect round tight circle, but you must spray directly on. Don't try and go round it or whatever because you will spray underneath it. Just go over and on. And that's as easy as it gets. It's equal and away you go. I hope that's okay for you. Right, but now I'm going to come to my old nemesis. The, I write many emails a week for Alclad for technical questions. And this is a question that always, always comes up. And to be honest, it gets boring. Good man, Brian. Alp 310 clear coat gloss. Now. This is a finishing product. It should not be used for anything else but to finish your model. Poundland, that's the one. Evening, Darren. Hello, mate. Glad to see you here, fella. As I say, this is a finishing product. Don't confuse this with Aqua Gloss. Aqua Gloss is your barrier, your protective barrier coat, 
your weathering coat, your deckling coat, everything else. This is a finishing coat and nothing else, but it is a hot product. If you were to put an oil product, an oil wash on top of this, it will soak in and it will ruin your finish. Believe me, I did it the first time many, many moons ago and not with this product, with another product. And I completely murdered the model that I made. But the main issue that people have with this is getting it to dry. Um, I'd like to say, if I'm honest, you're doing it wrong. But I can't say things like that. So I word the emails nicely. And I say, oh, you probably blasted it on. Still got some mess coming out of that. It's every product that Alclad do, I would recommend miscoating. Fred will back me up. If you miscoat our products on, you won't go wrong. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Fred. There you go. It looks like a sample I did last night. Now, I'll put in there, what, a dozen drops? And I will keep that one because it's clear and it will dry and it will be used again. So do that up. Now I'm going to do the bomb we just, or the drop tank we just did. Now with this, make sure your power is about 12 PSI like mine is now. Yep. What it is, you can see, when I'm blasting it, can you see that coming out? I say blasting it. When I'm doing that, you can see it misting. And it will go back that way eventually. But all I'm going to do is mist it from about six inches and just mist it on. I'm not going heavy. Right. Just missed it. Don't blast it. Because if I blast this on, it will still be wet a week, a week later. No point. So all we're doing is misting the coats on. And it's drying. Now, leave it a few seconds. Or you could blow it down with the airbrush just to get some air into it. Now, the reason I say this is that oxygen needs to get to all the layers to make it dry. Without oxygen, it won't dry. Without oxygen, we can't breathe. It works the same way. Without oxygen getting to it, it cannot dry. It will remain tacky for days, weeks. Now, gloss will take time to dry, like any gloss paint. It will take time to dry. But you just need to mist it. And build up the coat you want. I mean, really what I should have done was to put aqua gloss on this first. I always recommend aqua gloss first. If it goes if it looks like you're putting it on wet and it immediately shines, you're doing it wrong. You're just building it up. Let it dry again. Blow it down. strange as you can see it's now very very shiny what would that take two minutes now that will be dry in about an hour it, I, it won't dry straight away it can't it's impossible it's tacky now but it's glossy but if i if i tell you what I'll do i'll leave that top like that now so it's shiny on the bottom I'll do what most people do and blast it. Well, if I had any in there. Let me put a bit more in, just like so. Blow that away. That in there. Put the lid on the bottle. I'm surprised Freddie told me off for that yet. Now, on the bottom, I'm going to blast it like people think they should. 
Oh, look, that's lovely and shiny. I'll have this on the bench next week, and it'll still be tacky just by doing that. The top will be, well, it's nearly dry now. It's dry at the touch, to be honest. It's not cured, but it's dry. You know, it's good. That bottom bit will still be tacky this time next week because it looks wet. It doesn't look dry like glossy on the top like that one. But there you go. That I spend hours a week replying to emails because they cannot get this to dry because they still think it's Vallejo gloss and they can just beat it up and put it on. Or they've been using paint, which they think that, you know, like your Vallejos, your Patakas or whatever. And they think they can blast it on and it's going to work perfectly. It won't, I promise. Everything you do with Alclad needs really to be misted. It, the mill specs, everything. And it still cleans up exactly the same. This airbrush needs a big strip clean. Put through the cleaner. A couple of love bags. Yep, that is one of the things that I went over a couple of weeks ago, I think, was the black gloss base. Mr. On, build the coats up. Be patient. This is supposed to be a patient hobby. Right, there you go. Give that one more blowout. I know I can leave that. Don't leave that stuff in your airbrush because when it does go hard, it goes rock hard and it will be a pain to clean. Blow that out. Yes. And the compressor off. So, just to recap, we painted it black. We then masked the tips. I got the Ford, yep. Well, I haven't got it yet. It's on its way, but it's due, I think it's due tomorrow. Hannons are taking a long while at the moment, which is probably due to the pandemic. So what we did, we painted it black. We then master up with Kabaki or Tamaya, whatever you want to call it. Mine isn't, it's Kabaki tape. We then painted the tips white. I think I used, I just used the basic white um, I lost the plot the white primer and microfiller then the yellow on top of that and I think we've got a Dudley somewhere along the line and that was it we got that result hope you like that one now this is drying up nicely she's nice and shiny on the top and dry she's dry Um, I do have hairspray, believe it or not, and I looked right odd plonker when I went and bought some out of the chemist. I've got my Harmony hairspray up there. I do use hairspray. I use chip and fluid, um, which is Winsor & Newton art mask and fluid. I just use that for chippings. Um, I also have the microscale chip and fluid, and I have another acrylic chip and fluid that I use but I do tend to use the hairspray when I'm using mil spec and the masking fluid when I'm using metals uh, so we'll do that one night we'll do a chip but I also do it I like dry brushing as well which is my favorite way of doing chipping because you get a nice brush you can get a better result I find you can get too heavy a result with chip and fluid unless it's a 132 scale. If you're a 172 scale, then it's fine. But that's dry. The bottom is horrible, but the top is dry. So, Ian, I hope that helps you. Um, thank you for your question. And that's the sort of thing I'm looking for, for these Wednesday night's Q&As. And that's... That's that part of it done and out of the way. Whee! Uh, Try my cockpit goal. Uh, oh, there we go. That's my uh, pit for my 
F15, which has got a bit of photo etch on. I didn't really get to it. The seats are painted, but not dry brushed. Do you know how to, to, to dry brush, John? Have you ever done that before, mate? It's simple. I can show you doing it on a seat, if you like, quickly. I've got one of the F15 seats that needs a dry brush, and then it needs to be painted on the side for the uh, ejection rack. Okay, let's do one. Right, I'm going to break me on rules and normally said I would use uh, anything I do is alkaline. But when because we have to brush, I'm going to use something a little different. I'm going to use a different type of metal. Um, I don't want nothing too bright. We'll use this. I'm not going to mention any names, but it is an acrylic. And it comes in a little bottle. Give it a shake. Now, this is a cocodamol holder, but it makes a brilliant little palette. That's a trick I learned on Facebook some time ago, and it worked brilliant. Right, now you want an old brush, a good brush, but an old brush. Uh Where's my favourite? There you go. This is an old Airfix brush, which I've had for about six or seven years. It's quite, it's soft, but it's also stiff, if you know what I mean. It's weird. It's done its business in its time. We want a nice bit of Kleenex. Or plenty, whatever you want to call it. One sheet is plenty. And all you do is you load your brush up like so. Okay, so it's loaded. And then you brush it off. Because this is 170 second scale, I don't want to be putting a really light color on there. So let's brush that right off. So nearly nothing's coming off onto the paper towel. Then you reload it. Okay. And then brush it off again. So you're getting all the hairs, what the hairs, the hairs are done and covered in paint. Okay. Right, so there's nothing coming off hardly at all coming off on the towel now. I hope you can see this as I brush it. Very little. Oh, you could dry brush. Oh, well, not matter. And then all we're going to do is really lightly at the moment, while well, there's still paint on there, Go on over it. Now, on that side, let's hope you can see this. There you go. There's, so, don't know why that's doing that, but come back a bit. There you go. That's just blank. But where I've just dry brushed on the other side, it looks, it's got the details showing up. And all that does, just gives you details, a little bit warm one look and just all over apart from the seat area because even the seat area is black on a on a ram just to give it a little bit and then you pick your details out so while i'm doing it i'll do the other one it's all right john you never know someone might not know too so it's all helpful buddy so it's going to really lightly it just picks the details out. I mean, grey would be better, to be honest. But I like it. I like the metallic look. This is 170 seconds, so really it's a bit overkill, but there you go. That's ready to pick the detail out. Piece of cake. Simple. And then, where's my mess cup? This is my favourite pure clear honey from Morrison's. I put it in. Clean the brush. Put that out of the way. And the brush is now ready for the next time. Ha! I don't mask it, Brian. I don't use masks for wheels. I uh, I will do it. I'll do it next week, Brian. 
How's that? That's a starter for next week. I'll get the wheels together for this. Um, mind you, they're small. I've got the prop. Is This prop is from a P51 Revell 136 Mustang. I'll do the wheels for that. That's a bit bigger, a bit more lively. Um, I'll show you exactly what I do, if that's all right with you. So that's that brush cleaned. I think that's a good plan. I remember that one. Throw that in the bin. Well, I don't need to. There you go. I freehand it, but there's a t there is a trick. A little trick I've got. Uh, I'll show you how to do it. I have no problem showing anything how I... I mean, I'm not saying that's the right way to do it. It's how I do it. And I've got away with it now for the last eight to ten years. So it works. Yeah, I can do that too, Adrian. It's very difficult to do that on camera like we are now. Great stuff, Brian. Um, I will do that, Adrian. Not a problem. Uh, I've got that. Well, yeah, because the, the Mustang canopy, I believe, is all in one on that. So it, it's got the metallic bit to it. I'll show you how I do it. I marked that up as well. So that's easy. That's next week nearly sorted. Must remember to get a, a decent blade of a knife. That's your main thing. You need a, a really good scalpel and a brand new blade every time when you're masking canopies. But yeah, I mean, there are different masks you can use. I've got a mask set you can use for wheels, especially for, t for tanks, although I very often... I don't very often do ARVs. Although I did find a Tiger 1 set the other day. Um, an Eddard Tiger 1 big head set. I don't know how I got it or where I got it from. But that means I've got to do a Tiger at some point. But the next one up after this, after the uh, F-15i Ram, is going to be that Ford. Which I'm sure Fred will be egging at the bit for me to do. Because he's never seen me do anything but aircraft, I think. And we're going to do it in a, I think we'll do it in a candy colour. I haven't decided yet. I might go a little bit weird on that and make it a bit of a mark special. And not do what you'd expect me to do. It won't be blue, put it that way. Armoured glass, that'd be different. <laughs> Looking up here. What do I look like in holomatic, holomatic spectral chrome? That'd be different. That would look good. And then over top of that, we could do um, a nice colour of some description. Like a candy red or a candy orange. No, they, we would do that anyway. We don't do a candy colour. Do a hot metal colour or transparent. That'd be different. But yeah. And we'll also show you how to paint the tyres. Well, I don't know. I haven't got the kit yet. I haven't even looked at a review on the kit. So I don't even know if they're rubber tyres or whether they're plastic wheels on that or anything. But hey-ho. There you go. Right. So that's it. I've done my bit. Now you're going to do yours. You've got a question from Brian. I've got one from Adrian. So I know what I'm doing. I'll write that down now so I don't forget. If I've got a pencil somewhere, I can't write in a pen. I'm not old enough. I'm still at primary school. I know I've got one somewhere. There it is. Find my Mac. With a black chrome stripe. Yeah, that'd be good, wouldn't it? I know, Richard, this is something that Fred's got me at. He wants me to do this for GT. I have no idea why, but I said I'd build one. And it's different, isn't it? So it's wheels and cockpit mask. Simple. That's that one sorted for Adrian and Brian next week. Cars. Yeah, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang did. I'll give you that much, mate. And I ain't building that. It's Tamaya, Stephen. 
Um, it's a Tamiya kit. It, I think it's a fairly new kit because that car, that new car isn't that old now. It's not the one that Clarkson had. It's the next version up. So it's the more uh, race go and road car than a road car made into a race car. It's weird. They've made this one more, a little bit more harder. It is a true race car for the road. So it'll be interesting. But yeah, I'm going to build that. It's something different. And then I've got to get on to, at some point soon, I'm going to, I might do them all metal. I'll be different. Oh, don't worry, mate. I'm different. You ain't going to worry about that, son. What can we do? Ah, you know what young Rob showed us boys this morning? Can you imagine that as his pinstripe? That would look pretty cool. Yeah, exactly what I'm thinking. Would do do use that as the pinstripes. Have a couple of pinstripes going over the top. When I say pinstripes, you know what I mean. That would look neat. But yeah, that's a good idea. Hot rod, yeah. Now, I built some dragsters, but I never built anything like that. But I did, I, I say I built dragsters. I'm talking about, uh, how old am I now? 55, 30 odd years, 35 years ago, the last time I built a car. Um, we were talking on the phone to Rob the other week. There may be something special coming out for the car users. We're not sure yet. Something I think, or the car makers especially Glenn, he'd love this if it does work out uh, what have i got here oh i know what this is this is another one of the high shines and i don't know how well the camera will pick this up around the lid but that is an aluminium high shine we've got the ultra the high shines and the ultra shines coming out hopefully very soon but that's yeah i've got four or five different ones here i need him to release the titaniums super high shine ultra yeah i need him to release the uh titaniums i think they're fantastic did you get the titanium to look at and try it's brilliant color it really is nice. Yeah, I've, I've just been testing those, mate. I doubt if he'd have sent you those out yet. But yeah, that'll be good. I'm just... I think I've got all the colours. Well, I have got all the colours at the moment. It just... Yeah, that's right. There you go. Right, we're coming up to the hour, guys. So, let's again, thanks for joining me. Lynn will be picking someone out. If it's okay with you, Richard, I'll count you out, because I know you can't use the stuff, and I understand 100% why. Um, it's not for other people to know, but I know why. So, I will count you out, if that's okay with you, but I will do a, do a draw for... A set of three colors okay mate uh, i hope you understand richard but you you know why i'm not gonna put you in because i think think i know you can't use them my friend um yeah i was gone again and we're back so that's the hour believe it or not where did that time go right yeah everybody's please stay safe look after yourselves if you get offered a jab good man you're very welcome i just look just stay safe have a great week 
if you want something done or you want me to show you how I do something, again, I'm not saying it's correct. I'm just saying it's how I do it and it works for me. So all the best, everybody. Have a great week and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Thanks, Adrian. Cheers, buddy. All the best. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys.